Hey everybody, this is Andy Bennett with the CSS New Civil War Interpretive Center uh, back with our food preservation series. In this video, we're going to be talking about fermentation. But first, let's talk about um, the bacteria and microorganisms that make food spoil. Uh, in the food preservation techniques I'm going to present, uh, we're creating a hostile environment for those bacteria to keep them from thriving and surviving. In the previous video, we talked about drying, in which we're just removing water altogether. The basic uh, need that everything on planet Earth needs is water to survive. So in drying, we're taking that away. But we, a lot of times, uh, to enjoy this food or use it for later, we need it to maintain uh, its texture or its consistency or having, having that liquid in it so we can't remove the water. The bacteriums uh, that make food spoil, they don't like certain conditions. They don't like high saline conditions, they don't like high acidic conditions, and they don't like high sucrose conditions. So basically they don't like really salty things, really acidic things, and really sweet conditions. When you think about a lot of preserved foods we have, they meet all those conditions, and a lot of them meet multiple of those conditions, right? Um, one of the other things that needs is oxygen. So putting things in a anaerobic or low oxygen environment also helps keep those bad bacteria at bay. Um, there's a couple of exceptions, but one of them that you've probably heard of is botulinum. Uh, botulinum bacteria needs low oxygen environment to survive, but it typically does not survive, survive or thrive in high acidic environments um, it's one of the few exceptions, uh, to kind of the rule, um, you need to be careful of it. It's more consistent in, uh, canned products. That's why we look for, uh, in the grocery store and make sure we don't, uh, have, uh, dented cans and things like that. But we're going to talk about, uh, the good bacteria that's going to help us out in fermenting vegetables. Uh, that's lactobacteria. It's present in almost any vegetable uh, there is, and that's why you see such a, a, a gamut of different fermented vegetables across the world. This is sauerkraut. You're familiar from German culture. If you're from eastern North Carolina, collard kraut. You may have experience with that. Uh, you might have heard of kimchi from Korean culture. Um, the Japanese do lots of fermented vegetables. Fermented vegetables found almost in every culture going back in antiquity. But today, uh, we're going to talk about sauerkraut and uh, a couple other recipes for fermented cabbage that you can do. Okay, how is that lactobacteria working? How does this process work? So we're going to go over that, and while we're talking about that, we're gonna, I'm going to give you a recipe. Uh, this is some sauerkraut that I've got working here. In 19th century, they would have had big uh, kraut crock, a big ceramic crock for making this. Right, the key things in this are going to be creating that high salt environment and acid, right? Right, so but we're not going to add any kind of acid to this mixture to this fermentation, we're going to use that lactobacteria, they're going to help us out, right? Uh, in your recipe, we're going to do um, we need three pounds of cabbage three uh, tablespoons of kosher salt or sea salt. We don't want to use table salt because the iodine in it, uh, that's going to give us off colors, off flavors, and it's going to interfere with the, the, the fermentation process. And we're going to need a quart of water uh, and a quart glass jar. Okay, uh, in your jar, in the same way I have done in this crock, we're going to layer cabbage up in there. We're going to mix that salt with that water and pour that brine solution in there, right? Okay, so we've got the cabbage. It's resting in that nice brine solution. That high salt content is going to help us keep that bacteria out, hinder it from growth. The cabbage needs to stay underneath the water in an anaerobic or low oxygen environment. Remember, that's the, the, one of the other things the bad bacteria doesn't like. As this cabbage stays out at room temperature, submerged above uh, under its water in this large uh glass container or in those old-fashioned crocs they would have something to weigh it down in this glass container a teacup saucer i have fits perfectly in here and i can weigh it down by taking 
a, a sterile glass jar full of water just to press it down and keep it. Any bits that flow up, we're going to skim off. As it sits at room temperature, that lactobacteria present in the vegetables is going to get to work. It loves the sugar and the carbohydrates in our cabbage. It's going to start eating those and breaking them down. And as a byproduct, it's going to create lactic acid. So it's creating its own acid. So we've got brine. We got anaerobic conditions and the bacteria is breaking down the cabbage, which is releasing vitamins, nutrients. And as we all know, if we eat a lot of greens, it, our stomach has a hard time digesting them. It's making them more easily digestible to us and it's creating acid. So that's how that lactobacteria is helping us ferment and make a tasty product for us to do enjoy. When you're doing these recipes, right, when you combine your, your cabbage and your brine solution, this is the time to add whatever flavoring you're going to add. In a traditional sauerkraut, it's caraway seeds. Uh, in uh, other uh, recipes like this kimchi style cabbage I've made, um, we can add other things. Kimchi, uh, most people report kimchi has like this writing smell. It has a fish paste in it, so that puts off that smell and puts a smell that Westerners don't don't find pleasant um in this version i've just used some of the spice spices uh i used uh you can use a korean chili paste uh, but in this version what i've done is put sriracha some sriracha and red pepper flakes in it to give me a spicy uh, kimchi like cabbage uh thing uh, the other thing is you can mix vegetables. You can be as creative as possible. In this, I've added well, some yellow onion into it. Um, but you can add other vegetables. You can ferment them together. Uh, in your fermentation process, you've got your, your cabbage in the water. It's sitting out. You're going to have it weighed down. But you also want to cover it to keep bugs and flies and stuff from, in, from landing in there, uh, too. You want to let it sit out. For three to four days, this I've had out um, for at least a month. The characteristics you're going to look for in your kimchi, and you want to check on this. You want to kind of keep it in, in, a, in a cool, dark spot. Um, but you want to check on it, look for any, um, any anything that's sticking above the water to skim those off. You may have some slight foam or bubbling. You want to take the foam off, but you will smell it. You don't want it to smell bad. You want it to smell first like cabbage. When it's finished uh, doing this process, you're going to have this uh, a, a silky, uh, smooth, like glistening glaze on the surface. Um, it's going to smell slightly sweet, uh, cabbagey smell. Uh, and the liquid's going to be milky in color. Um, I hope you're enjoying these recipe, these recipes in these series. I enjoy presenting them to you. In food preservation techniques, in any recipe, you want to start off with clean hands. You want to start off with sanitized and washed uh, items. Um, you don't want to introduce any bad bacteria. Uh, you just need to take caution with, with doing any of these processes, no matter what they are, to be as sanitary as possible to begin with with and throughout the whole process and if in question don't enjoy throw out uh, as always check out our videos on youtube facebook and instagram thank you for watching